guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, this is the Vaonis Vespera 2. Uh, Vaonis was kind enough to loan me this telescope for a couple of months. And in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the Vaonis Vespera 2. And of course, we're going to image the sun, the moon, and some deep sky objects. And, and I'm going to tell you the general experiences I had uh, using this smart telescope. So without further ado, let's go. Vespera 2 is the second iteration of the Vaonis Vespera Smart Telescope. It is an apochromatic quadruplet refractor telescope with a 50mm aperture and a 250mm focal length. It has a high quality FPL52 extra low dispersion glass element to get an excellent true color view of the night sky. In comparison to the first Baonis Vespera, the Vespera 2 boasts a newer and larger Sony IMX585 8.3 megapixel camera sensor. The battery of the Vaonis Vespera 2 lasts for about 4 hours and you can recharge the telescope with a USB-C cable that is not included. The Vespera 2 can store up to 25GB of data and can be controlled over Wi-Fi with the Singularity app available for iOS and Android smart devices. The Vaonis Vespera 2 can be bought with a lot of optional extras at additional cost, so let me show you what those are. So let me show you a couple of optional extras you can buy with the Vespera 2. Um, one of the, these options is this Vaonis Vespera backpack and super useful of course if you want to travel uh, or hike to a dark site or a dark sky location. Let me just show you the, the backpack here. Let me open it up. So you can see this is a special compartment to store the Vespera 2 inside your backpack. It has this nice protection cover, can pull it out like this. And here you can see the Vespera 2 Smart Telescope in this special compartment. So that's very nice, very nice to have this protection cover for the telescope to keep it safe. And we also have a couple of compartments over here. So in one of these, I put a very lightweight tripod also available at additional cost to, yeah, to set up the Vespera 2 and to do some remote imaging. So let me put it over here. And we also have these two compartments for additional filters you can use in combination with the Vespera 2. So there is a light pollution filter. If you are imaging from an urban area, um, there is also a dual band filter available, especially useful if you want to get high contrast images of emission nebulae. And we have a solar filter uh, that is available for, yeah, of course, for imaging the sun. You can wirelessly connect and control the Vaonis Vespera 2 with the Singularity app available for both iOS and Android smart devices. For a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install and update the Singularity app, please check out my earlier video review of the classic Vespera in the video description below. After installation, you can open the Singularity app and connect to the Wi-Fi signal of the Vespera 2 to control the telescope. Just push the big round button on the Vespera 2 and after it starts flashing in blue, it is ready to connect. Click on open Wi-Fi settings on the main screen of the app, select the Vespera Wi-Fi signal and return to the app. Once connected, the app will show the name of your telescope. Observe the sun with the Vespera 2, select the solar mode on the main screen. The Vespera 2 will start moving its arm to about 45 degrees, after which it will indicate you'll need to install the solar filter. This is pretty easy. Just remove the dummy filter by clicking on the filter and replace it with the solar filter like this. After that, make sure the Vespera 2 is facing the sun by using the info in the app and remember, never look directly into the sun as you might go blind. 
takes the Vespera to a couple of minutes to align and autofocus on the sun, during which the app will show you all kinds of interesting information about the sun. When aligned and focused, the Vespera 2 will show its characteristic blue button on the screen, after which it will show you a live view of the sun. After a while, I realized that I placed the Vespera 2 exactly on an off-road running track. Anyhow, the sky was a bit hazy, but I could clearly see the sunspots in the Singularity app. There was actually a huge area of 25 combined sunspots. This was called Group 3590, and it was about 7 times the diameter of the Earth in size. Pretty incredible, right? We are moving towards the solar maximum, so you can see plenty of sunspots this year. You can pinch the screen of your smart device to zoom in on the sunspots in the app. The solar mode in the Singularity app is pretty straightforward and easy to use. It contains a very nice solar system option which will allow you to check out the size of the sun as you would observe it from different planets in our solar system. I'd advise you to check out the view of Mercury as it is about three times closer to the sun than our Earth. You can easily take a photo of the sun by clicking on the photo button, or you can click on save photo in the menu on the top right. You can click on the information button, which will reveal a lot of information about the sun. If you want to record all the pictures of a live session, just go into Image Format mode and select Live Images. This mode will save every picture taken during a live observation session of the Sun, the Moon or the planets in JPEG. And when you're done observing, just click the red stop button and the arm will move to 45 degrees again, after which you can safely remove the solar filter. Here's a time-lapse video of individual JPEG pictures I took of the sun that day with the Vespera 2. As you can see, it was pretty hazy. Here's an edited picture of the sun that day with that huge region of sunspots about 7 times the diameter of Earth. What do you think of these images? Let me know in the video description below. Alright, so that concludes my solar imaging session with the Vespera 2. It's in the backpack again, so I will travel home and do some lunar imaging and hopefully also some deep sky astrophotography with the Vespera 2 tonight. Let's go! Spent about 40 minutes traveling and cycled around 10 kilometers while carrying the Vespera 2 on my back. Despite its weight of a few kilograms, transporting the Vespera 2 was quite manageable. If you're interested in the Baonis Vespera 2, you can find some links to trustworthy telescope shops across the USA and Europe in the video description below. During the challenging winter in the Netherlands with lots of cloudy nights, I had only two opportunities to capture the moon. 
These are videos of about two weeks ago when I captured the moon with the Vespera 2 in its crescent phase, when I compared the Vespera 2 to the ZWOC Star S50. If you're interested in that comparison video, you'll find the link to that video in the description below. Capturing the moon is much like capturing the sun with the Vespera 2. There's only one difference, which is that the telescope needs to be initialized first to capture the moon. To do that, you'll need to wait until it's sufficiently dark and the stars are out. Just level the mount and press initialize on the main screen of the Singularity app. The Vespera 2 will take a couple of minutes to autofocus on the stars and find its position. After that, you can click on the little planet icon at the bottom of the screen, which will give you access to a vast database uh, of solar system, nebulae, galaxies, star clusters and other objects you might be interested in observing. There is also a search bar to directly search for an object. I selected the moon and the Vespera 2 slewed and auto-focused on the moon in about 2 minutes and gave me a live view very similar to the live view I got when imaging the sun that day. Similar to solo mode, you can pinch your touchscreen to zoom in on the many beautiful craters of the moon. I captured some pictures by clicking on the photo icon and I clicked save in photos in the top right menu. I also tried to share a live picture of the moon by clicking on the share button. This works, but as long as I was connected to the Vespera 2, I wasn't connected to the internet. So in order to share the picture, I needed to switch to my home Wi-Fi network. The Vespera will continue to track the target and you can always reconnect to the Wi-Fi signal of the Vespera 2 and continue your live observation session in the Singularity app. It was still very hazy that night, but let me show you a time-lapse video of the individual pictures and a processed picture of the 91% lit waning moon that night. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. The clouds rolled in after imaging the moon that night, but let me share a couple of deep sky objects I managed to capture about two weeks ago when testing the Vaonis Vespera 2. As mentioned, the easiest way to search for an object is by clicking on the planet icon at the bottom of the screen. The Singularity app shows objects by categories like nebulae, galaxies, star clusters and more. I especially liked the constellation category, which shows noteworthy objects for each of the constellations in the night sky. For example, the Orion constellation features 11 deep sky objects to choose from. Another excellent feature which I didn't mention in my earlier videos is the plan my night mode in the Singularity app. You can find it by clicking on the schedule icon at the bottom of the screen. After clicking the icon, select the location and the date, name your plan and the Singularity app will show you various objects that will be visible at that particular location and time. Timeline is a great feature as it shows you which objects will be high in the sky during different hours of your observation night. Just add these objects to your timeline to create a plan. When the night comes, you can initialize the telescope and select your plan and the Vespera 2 does all the hard work for you. I managed to capture the Orion Nebula from my rooftop in the city a couple of weeks ago. After selecting M42, the Vespera 2 takes about 2 minutes to find and autofocus on the nebula. 
After that, it starts taking and stacking 10 second pictures. This technique is known as lucky imaging, where each 10 second picture will increase your signal of the nebula while also lowering the noise in your picture. You can go into image format and choose to save the individual pictures in FITS format, save the cumulative stacked pictures in JPEG format, or save the final stacked image in TIFF format for further processing. For example, here's a time-lapse video of the cumulative JPEG images that show my one-hour capturing attempt of the Orion Nebula. And here's the final processed image. Please note that I used the dual band filter to enhance the structure of the nebula and block the urban light pollution. I like this picture, but if you're looking for a more colorful picture, I highly recommend traveling to a dark location and shoot the nebula without any filter, or use the light pollution filter. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I also managed to capture the Rosette Nebula about two weeks ago by using the unique covalence technique to create a panorama picture. Taking panorama pictures is unique to Vaonis at this point in time and I don't know any other smart telescope that features this option. After selecting mosaic mode, you'll see a graphic representation of the target. You can rotate and widen your field of view on your smart screen to create a panorama picture of your liking. After you're done, the Vespera 2 will automatically find and capture different parts of the night sky you selected to create that panorama picture. Depending on the target, the mosaic mode needs at least an hour or two to sufficiently capture different parts of the sky to create that panorama picture. This all happens automatically and you can enjoy the progress or just leave the Singularity app and the Vespera 2 will automatically continue to create that panorama picture. Here's a 90 minute progression of the Reset Nebula and here's that final picture where I used the dual band filter again from my Bortle Class 7 light polluted urban skies. Let me know what you think. So what's my final verdict of the Vaonis Vespera 2? Well, to be honest, I like it a lot. And I know some of my die-hard astrophotography friends will shake their heads and disapprove. So let me explain why. The Vespera 2 has a beautiful design and it is completely wireless. I put it in my living room as a piece of tech art. For beginners, there's almost no learning curve involved. People can almost effortlessly enjoy the night sky and the Singularity app is very easy to use and understand. If you want a bigger challenge, you can download and process the FITS and TIFF files to create your unique astro picture. You'll end up with very decent quality images of the sun, the moon and many deep sky objects. Especially the bigger nebulae are perfect for the Vespera 2 with its newer Sony IMX585 sensor and its unique mosaic mode to create a panorama picture. Is it the cheapest smart telescope? No! The Seastar S50 and the Dwarf 2 are more budget friendly but offer a lower resolution and have smaller camera sensors. Is it too expensive for a smart telescope? Well, let's consider the alternative. A decent equatorial mount, a telescope for astrophotography, some guiding gear and a decent camera will get you easily beyond the $2000 price range. And I'm not even talking about the steep learning curve involved in mastering our beautiful astrophotography hobby. Does the Vespera 2 have the best hardware? No. Do you end up with the best astrophotography pictures? No. But I can switch the Vespera on and enjoy the night sky in under 5 minutes. It has been raining in the Netherlands for almost the entire winter. I pulled out my expensive Astro rig only once during a couple of clear nights in January. That's it! Smart telescopes like the Vespera 2 are great when you have a one or two hour gap in the clouds at night and you want to observe and capture objects within a couple of minutes. Just don't use it for planetary imaging. Here's Jupiter. You'll need a much larger telescope for that. Subscribe if you liked the video and check out my website astroformspace.com for more info about astrophotography. Clear skies!